Greetings, everyone. This is John Walter, a pastor of the Calvary Road Baptist Church in Monrovia, California. Uh, you're seeing me in my library um, here in Monrovia. We are in the gulag known as Los Angeles County. Uh, we're at the south end of the People's Republic of California, rapidly moving toward the recall of Governor Gavin Worrisome with more than 1.9 million uh, signatures on the recall ballot. Uh, we have no idea who will end up succeeding him or whether he will run to succeed himself or will end up with a lousy uh, Democrat or a lousy Republican. But most people are of the opinion um, that the hypocrite in chief of the state of California, uh, that, that we would be hard pressed to find somebody worse than him. Uh, more importantly, uh, we have our weekly Zoom session and uh, at this time, it is my privilege to introduce uh, a missionary that our church has supported for a number of years, and we very much enjoy him and his wife. Uh, his name is Taki Korinidis, and he is on the island of Zakynthos. And as I am reading the great books and the historical accounts of the, of the old Greek writers, from time to time, the island of Zakynthos pops up. And uh, I find out that uh, his, his island has a storied place in history, uh, not as significant as Athens or Sparta or uh, cities like that, but still, I mean, it's always, it's always been uh, a factor in ancient Greek history. And uh, my wife and I had the privilege several years ago of visiting with he and his wife on the island of Zakynthos. And so, Brother Taki, it's great to welcome you at this time. Great to be with you. He has a uh, he has a worldwide ministry, not only as a church planter in his home country, but also has a uh, an internet radio broadcast in the Greek language that reaches around the world. There are a significant number of Greeks living in Australia and other places, and so he has an ongoing ministry with them. Uh, would you, first of all, for the people who have been added to our congregation since you were here, would you give us basically a brief rundown of your upbringing, education, <clears throat> and how you came to meet the woman who is your wife, the mother of your children, uh, and how you came to Christ? <laughs> well, I was uh, born and raised on this island here, and Zakynthos is uh, on the western part of Greece. And I was born into the Greek, uh, into a Greek Orthodox family. Our family had a long tradition in the Orthodox Church, uh, having priests uh, from the 1600s. And uh, I was raised to be the next successor, basically, here on the, in town. Uh, but the Lord had, dif had different plans for me. When I was uh, 17, uh, my father passed away, and I visited an uncle that I had in California. Um, after I finished high school. And while there, I stayed for uh, about six or seven months. And then uh, I met this young lady that uh, asked me to go out with her. <laughs> and uh, of course, it was a Wednesday night. And she took me with another older couple to this heretical independent Baptist church. <laughs> And it was Wednesday night Bible study, and uh, she was trying to get points for her team, bringing in visitors, <laughs> basically. <clears throat> and I thought she liked me. But anyway, and uh, there was the first time that I clearly was presented with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, I was really lost following a religion, a religion dead in works. Uh, a religion that teaches uh, that you will get the grace of God by remaining under the sa uh, sacramental life of the church. And as long as you're obedient to the priests and to the high priests and to the church uh, system, you might make it. Uh, and I've heard that the gospel was free and it was the, by the grace of God and you receive it only by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, it was very hard for me to received that, meaning that everything I believed so far, even my life, my identity, everything, 
uh, was not true. But uh, I kept going back. The pastor introduced me to the word of God. Uh, I tried to prove him wrong for a while. And then uh, I saw that he was right in the scriptures. And it was March 1990, a few months after I met uh, the young lady that took me to church, who became my wife. It was April. <clears throat> And uh, in March uh, 1990, the 9th of March, I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. Uh, it was a very dramatic event for me. It was, uh, I didn't just get saved. I was converted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, after that, um, with, I joined the U.S. Army for four years in uh, November 90 to November 94. And uh, received a good GI Bill. Uh, uh, help, and uh, I went to Bible college with that, and in 96, the Lord called us back here to Greece, and of course, uh, I had more of the calling than April. <laughs> See, she didn't know where she was going to, but we came here in 1996, November 96, and the Lord uh, had uh, his plans for this place, we met uh, a couple of believers uh, later on that year, and we were able to start a Bible study, and that uh, it went to a church. Now, we, with the grace of God, we were able to establish a church here on this island, another church on the mainland in Patra, uh, another church in Thessalonica, uh, and uh, we helped other missionaries to come into Greece as we have obtained uh, legal status as a church. As a matter of fact, we, we were the first independent Baptist church to have uh, its own building in Greece ever in history. Wow. And now well, at, least, at, least, at least since the first century. Yes, yes. And uh, from what we know in the record. So if there's a yes. some record somewhere, I don't know. But um, the Lord has uh, blessed us with a church here, with the camps. We, we've been having summer camps since 2005. Having uh, most of the kids that come are from the Greek families, lost Greek families. Uh, we have gained the trust of the people. Uh, we, we had a lot of words. Uh, imagine I came back in 96 and the priest announced to the church that I'm coming back to take his position. And he was preparing the crowd for me to, re to be received. And when <laughs> I went to his house and I had to confront him with the truth, uh, of course, that opened a war. And uh, we had a lot of opposition in the beginning. Uh, they tried to do everything they could to stop us, but the Lord just protected us and put his uh, uh, protection around us for those years. Now we, are, we, we had a newspaper for a few years now with the COVID, we have stopped, but the Lord has led us to another area of uh, evangelizing through uh, the internet. We have established a, a Greek Bible uh, radio, and we have uh, preaching and teaching, uh, hymns and encouragement, and uh, that is um, followed by Greeks around the world. We have over 2,000 listeners coming in, but we do have uh, about 500 unique listeners. That means these are 500 people that tune in every day to listen to the radio for two, three hours. And that is an incredible number for us uh, as being Greek. And uh, you understand the whole nation uh, is entrenched into the Orthodox traditions and church. Uh, also, Facebook has been a great tool this past year with a uh, with the lockdowns, uh, we uh, we got cameras and we got a, a sound system able to record, and we even have up to a thousand followers on our church Facebook page. And most of these people are uh, people that we know here that we have encountered that are shy or afraid to come to church because of the stigma they might get, uh, but they can sit home and listen to the gospel. And uh, that is, has been a great tool the Lord has used. So for the lockdown uh, part, I, I will say that it's been a blessing to the ministry here. Yes. Not, not for the believers. We, we miss each other. Uh, we have met a few times secretly. Uh, 
but uh, the Lord knows, and he knows that maybe this was the time for those that are not able to come or afraid to come to hear the gospel. Now, you have, uh, you have four children, uh, a daughter and three sons. Um, That's right. And if I understand correctly, your daughter, having graduated from Bible college and having taught as a Christian school teacher for some years, is now back in Zakynthos with you and your wife. Is that correct? Yes, uh, that was a surprise for us. We thought she'll never come back <laughs> to this island here. Um, but Zoe decided to, uh, not decided, actually she was led by the Lord. Uh, to come and uh, live her life here by helping us. So in last uh, June of 2020, and she has been working in the church, and she's been doing uh, the videos and the Facebook, and uh, she's been doing the YouTube now, the channel we have. Uh, I forgot to say that we also have a channel with the church that she's putting up these uh, the sermons, and she's uh, editing and putting on the screen the verses that I read or whatever, I mean, it's, she's doing a great job. And uh, she's teaching English also as a side uh, work to be able to make some income. And she's been a blessing to us uh, and seeing how the Lord has um, uh, matured her in his faith, in, in his love, and uh, it's incredible. Well, when she was uh, in her first or second year of Bible college, um, I invited her to speak uh, to uh, our ladies group. It's an annual thing that we do about a week before Mother's Day. And she arrived with another uh, MK, uh, another missionary kid friend of hers. And, um, and uh, the response on the part of our women was a very good one. I, I think it was the first time she had ever spoken to to grown-ups, you know, uh, but she did a good job. Uh, she's a she's a very bright woman, um, and um, you know, growing up in Greece um, and and with Greek being her first language, uh, wow, she has she has an advantage over other Christians when it yes. comes to learning the Word of God, the New Testament, um, and uh... that's. Um, I would imagine that it's always a challenge for her to sit under preaching that comes from a guy that either Greek was not his first language, and it may not be any language of his. <laughs> and, uh, and so she has to be, she has to maintain composure and patience and toleration um, of, of a kind that she doesn't have to do with her dad. Because, yes, that's uh, right. <laughs> you, you, you know, being immersed in Greek and the Greek New Testament, uh, there are some things I'm sure are much easier for you than someone like me. So praise God for that. And I'm so glad to find out that she's involved uh, in your ministry, because just to talk to her for a few minutes that that morning uh, some years ago, uh, it was obvious that there is a fierce loyalty to her father because it's reflected uh, in my own daughter. Uh, and so I was able to recognize it. Uh, she's just, um, she just, she's confident that God's gonna use her dad and she's a prayer warrior and a support to her father, which is, uh, which is a great thing. Yes. Now you have, a, you have a, your first, your oldest son is now married and I think you're a grandfather, is that true? That's right, that's right. <laughs> It's, uh, it's a blessing to have that. I, just on Zoe, I wanted to say that having the ability to have uh, fluency in both languages is a great help to me for translations. Yes. Uh, I don't have to, I don't need to have four eyes now, two for Greek and two for English. Uh, I can only use the two. So she's helping me a lot with that. Uh, Fotinos is our older son. Uh, he's 21, going to 22 this uh, April. And he's finishing Bible college too in, in missions. He's married uh, to uh, a young lady that he met at the, uh, at the Bible college. And her dad is a pastor. And uh, now they live in uh, North Dakota at the moment. And they're planning to be missionaries here to Greece in, by 2025. Well, I have a question for you. Because I'm a Facebook friend of your son's. 
and I see him that he is a, a wholehearted devotee of the Second Amendment. Yes. Um, <laughs> and he buys and builds. Uh, he's not going to be able to do that in Greece, is he? Uh, well, we have a, a, a shooting club now. Okay. And uh, you get a special permit. Of course, you don't get to keep your weapons. The police keeps the weapons. Yes. It's mostly handguns. Uh, of course, criminals can carry them. Yes. <laughs> but uh, fortunately, I would say as a country, uh, we don't have a great uh, threat from daily violence with handguns. So it has been... But nowadays things are changing. Uh, Greece is becoming more international, especially in the mainland Athens and big cities. So we are beginning to see the uh, erosion of the Greek culture into an international culture. So I guess by the time he comes here, uh, he can bring his uh, handguns and use them out in the range. And as I said, the police keeps them. You go uh, take them and uh, you can uh, have uh, uh, your sport with, uh, with that. That's the similar the way uh, they have in the United Kingdom now, I think, where they, they keep the weapons not in your personal possession, but in a separate lockup that you have yeah. access to. So we, we are allowed to have shotguns and hunting gear not uh, rifles so not and rifles. shotguns yeah just shotguns yeah 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 so tell us about uh, the impact of the lockdown on your ministry the impact uh it's been uh, tough on the church members uh, for we are not able you know church people say i can go to church on the internet or the tv or on zoom or on Sunday. It's not. That's not a living church. Yes. It is made to live and interact as an organism. You cannot separate the cells and say you have a body. So in that aspect, it has hurt us. Uh, in the aspect, though, of faithfulness of the people, uh, caring for their tithes and caring to give their missions, uh, promises, and... Uh, to do whatever we can in this lockdown, the people are thirsty for that, and they they have shown uh, their need on that. Oh, the finances are going down because most of them are do not have work, as you know. Well, most of the people that are listening to us do not know that uh, our island is uh, sustained by uh, tourism. Uh, six months in the summer, most of the work is done. Uh, through tourism and people, uh, since the lockdowns we had, we had a very short uh, tourist season and the people uh, were hurting financially, but they were faithful to the Lord and to the promises to the missionaries we have, we are supporting. Uh, and uh, so there's plus and minus uh, things in the church. Uh, the other thing, as I said, we were able to meet uh, instead of Bible study here physically, we do it with Zoom. And that, that also, it's a blessing because we have a lady from Athens, another young girl from Thessalonica, she's 17, uh, Katarina, and she uh, heard the gospel on, uh, on the internet. She got saved. And then she can't go to church anywhere there because her parents are Orthodox. So she's communicating with me. I did, uh, I did have to make sure that she, she told her parents were communicating because she's a minor. Yes. So they know and they have access to our uh, conversations. But now she joins in our Bible study. And she didn't have any, any feed on that. And the same for another lady who works for the army in Athens. And she can't go to church. And uh, mostly uh, Brother Jimakos' church, they do in Farsi and English, so she wanted more help in Greek. So she's joining in with us. We have a couple, we have four or five people joining in from the mainland. So the impact, uh, because of the lockdown, we have put more thought into uh, the internet. 
and that has helped the church to meet others, other believers from around Greece, and that has encouraged them. So um, we're looking through this time. We have financial problems, but we remain faithful. Uh, we have a need to meet, but we are meeting others. So there's always when when there's a counter, there's a uh, an attack. There's a counter attack. Yeah. Or, a little bit. Well, let me. Yeah, you, your mention of the uh, of the service that's held in Farsi in uh, in Athens, uh, the language of Persia, the language of Iran. Uh, yes. I've been. I have gotten a few whiffs of information that God is doing some really significant things in Iran. Is that true? Yes, and there's a lot of refugees. If you remember, in the news, Greece was hit with refugees four or five years ago and three years ago uh, with uh, at least 25% of what they went to Europe. They, they came through Greece, through Turkey, through the Aegean Sea. Uh, thousands of them, hundreds of thousands of them have stayed behind. Uh, the Lord has led Brother George Dimakos, another missionary there in Athens, to start a work there. Uh, they have seen miraculous things. And uh, it's mostly uh, the Iranians, the Farsi, or the Persians. Uh, we, they try to have work with the Egyptians or with any other Arab nation. And it just has not flourished, has not gone anywhere as, far, as much as this uh, Iranian. is just a blooming uh, ministry uh, around the world. And people that have left Greece and went to Europe, uh, they have started churches there. They've started a church in Paris. They have started a church in uh, Amsterdam. Uh, people were trained here uh, to be pastors uh, uh, for those up in uh, Europe. And I have been going to Athens to speak uh, and to train uh, some of those people. And it's been a blessing to see. And uh, for the last year, I have not been able to travel because of the lockdowns and because of my uh, mother's health, but uh, uh, we're glad to be a part of that uh, work there. Well, maybe you could send me a link to the, the service in Farsi because we've had a young woman whose father wa uh, was an engineer in Iran, um, a, fairly, a very well-trained fellow, um, high-tech guy. Mm -hmm. And they moved here to the Los Angeles area and she, visited our church several times. It's about, a she lives uh, 45 minutes away, but uh, I've, we've been in contact with her for a number of years. She's not a believer. Uh, she's very much an activist. Uh -huh. um, and I think she would be open uh, to having a link that she could resort to from time to time to, to hear the gospel in her in her first language. Okay. Yes, yeah, certainly I will. I will need to make a note. <laughs> that would that would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. And uh, we have been getting uh, updates from time to time about your mother's health. You're the youngest of her children, uh, right. and you're no longer a kid, which means she has to be somewhat advanced in age. Uh, what is your mother's age now? She's eighty-nine right now. Okay. Yes. So she's facing the challenges of advanced age. She has uh, for the last three years. It's been worse for the last year and a half. Now the last uh, six months, uh, almost to eight months, she's be bedridden and with oxygen 24 hours. Uh, that has put a lot of stress on us. Um, we've been in and out the hospital. Uh, uh, we went 10 days in January, another 10 days in uh, February. Uh, she seems stable now, stabilized, and it's very hard. She's only getting 320 euros a month for pension, and it's just barely enough for food and electric. Uh, now, we have, uh, my brothers and I do um, hire a lady to attend to her and to change her and to help her with the uh, food there all day long. And it's been very hard because my mom is still lost. That's the hardest part. Um, and uh, she's not understanding 
or she's not accepting the situation that she can't um, help herself anymore. And that has brought a lot of frustration in her, which uh, it's passed on to everybody around the house and uh, mostly to April, uh, since I, I come to the office at least and I escape that, but uh, mostly to April it's been very hard uh, to hear all this negative all the time. So uh, it's been about three weeks now that I, I sadly had to go and reprimand her, uh, my mom, to, to tell her she, she can't talk like that and she should be appreciative that she's having all this help. Yeah. Uh, if she ends up in the uh, nursing home, it, she'll probably be dead in a month. Yeah. They, they don't really take care of her there. So the burden is on me. Uh, some of my brothers uh, don't have work. Uh, two of them are divorced. Uh, so it's uh, it's been a burden on us, uh, with finances and taking care of her. So running to the doctors and doing all the pills and, uh, but, um, I have come to the point to realize that none of us will go through life without problems. And I was talking with April a couple of days ago, we grabbed a coffee and we went down to the port uh, here in Lithakia and uh, just to pray and just to reflect. And I said, you know, honey, I said, I thank the Lord that the problem is my mom and not you or I or our children or somebody younger. And, and uh, you know, life is gonna throw problems at us. I, I'd rather have that than any, anything on us. Uh, and yeah. just to be appreciative of the fact that the problem is a problem, but it's also a blessing. So that's uh, that we keep praying for her salvation. Uh, and uh, it's just so amazing how uh, it, it doesn't go through. Yeah, yeah. And it does, it, I say it has to take a miracle of God. There's no yeah. way uh, to, uh, to get her to understand unless God touches her. Well, another thing that, that strikes me with, uh, as, as irony is how uh, words in our era have utterly and completely lost their meaning. You no doubt have have seen on Zoom uh, where people will make some nonsensical comment of at least we can gather via the internet, and they don't understand. Uh, ecclesia has no meaning without person to person people being in the same place. <laughs> it's, That's right. It, it, it's not an ungathered gathering. Uh, right. And by the same token, with with when my mom was sick, family members would say, uh, "I'm there for you," and I would point out, "No, actually, you're not there for her unless you're there. When you're halfway around the world, to say I'm there for you means nothing. Nothing. <laughs> there. My thoughts are with there. you, baby." Yes, it, it, so, it is the physical thing. I don't think God ever meant it to be uh, an internet thing uh, yeah. or a virtual thing. Uh, but God, God is wise, and and this gives to you and your wife. Uh, I remember when my mother was going through that. Um, it, it is a, it is an opportunity to demonstrate not only to your own children, but also the 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 great cloud of witnesses um that sometimes honoring your father and your mother is very very challenging nevertheless it needs to be done it's god's way it's very true in our um sorry to interrupt you uh, because you said this i don't want to lose the thought is it has been a tremendous testimony to the people around us in the town here that we take care of her yeah and many of them have reprimanded her that you shouldn't be saying anything having Taki and April here taking such a good care of you. And uh, we pray that will be for the glory of God. There's certainly lessons for us to be learned here. Sure, sure. Uh, patience and everything, but also it's a, it's every time we go through trouble times, as you said, 
It's a testimony to the world. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, things, things that I, that I have, I'm, I'm becoming dimly aware at my advanced age that I wish I'd known decades ago is, is to have an appreciation of God's um, wisdom and, and how gracious he is. He's blessing us in ways that we, we just don't understand this side of heaven, probably, but um, yes. Um, but you're doing okay, huh? Yes, yes. Well, I we're am, glad. We're glad to hear I that, my fine. brother. <laughs> we're, we're so glad to hear that. Um, and and I'm I am so thankful that um, the uh, the pastor of that church where you uh, were brought to Christ is is a good friend of our congregation uh we love him and his wife tremendously uh we're sorry they now live in another state and wish we could see them every day uh but it was uh it was a singularly uh providential thing on god's part for you to end up in his ministry it was a wonderful yes thing. i i do uh by having experience by visiting churches and uh, so much speaking with people and all uh, uh, the church we visit, they're all great. They're all peculiar in their own way. Uh, but I, I am so glad I was saved under, under Marvin's uh, Odell's ministry and yeah. to get to know him and um, very loving. And uh, we love them. We sad we're, we're far away. We're reminisced many times. Uh, about good fellowship, uh, and maybe when this uh, quarantine is over and we'll be able to travel again, and uh, maybe we'll meet all of us together. So yes, well, would you please communicate uh, to your daughter and your two younger sons, as well as your wife, uh, our fondness for them, our our desire that God would bless them wonderfully. And how uh, how personally thrilled I am uh, that God uh, led your daughter to come back to the island. Uh, there is just no two ways about it. She is an asset. She is um, she is yes. one very very sharp cookie. That's something that you would have to be blind and deaf not to figure out right away. Yes, um, I, I, and I believe she will be a, a great blessing to the guy that. Uh, marries her yeah i think so i think I so think it will be the greatest decision that a man will do to to have that uh, girl as a wife yeah and, yeah uh, we we have trained her to take care of her younger brothers so she's trained with children yes. so <laughs> yes oh yes no but um, no she's loving and uh, very smart and very uh, a great asset to us yes amen you said April. April told me to say hello, and I forgot. So, <laughs> as, well, are there any uh, last thoughts or prayer requests that you'd like to leave with us before we before we sign off with prayer? Uh, well, I guess uh, I don't want to sound like like a cliche, but for this uh, coronavirus, I don't know if this is the beginning of the end or not, and we're not going to see any better days. We we getting ready for that too. But if uh, it is, we pray that uh, after we come out of this, we will be stronger. I know we we're, we're going to be. I don't want to forget uh, the blessings that we received through this uh, quarantine. The church and us as a family, we've spent a lot of time together now. And uh, I don't want to forget that and go back into a routine that it's just running trying to achieve things instead of living life i think we had more life so pray that as we come through this that we'll retain the knowledge and the wisdom we have gained uh, through this time man pray for my mom's salvation please uh, yes yes even though i see it as a incredible thing we're with god all things are possible so I pray for her salvation and for us where we are doing much better April and I through the stress uh, not between us but what she was facing so pray for April's health 
and uh, she's constantly have dizziness. It never goes away. Yeah, that's thing she lives with. So it's a miracle that she's driving and she's taking care of her family. So pray for her, her, her health and for her to be strong. And um, um, that would be for right now. Okay. We appreciate the time you spent with us and calling us and uh, just to uh, know what we're doing and how we're doing. And Yeah, we don't want to be like the people of Romans chapter one who are uh, unthankful. Uh, it's a terrible characteristic of lost people is that there's no gratitude for anything. <laughs> and uh, even things yeah. that are difficult and challenging, we should be thankful for because God has, um, has um, uh, an unappreciated benefit for our lives. He's so, he's so good, so gracious, and, uh, and so wonderful. Well, thank you, my brother, for taking the time on a Saturday evening. Uh, I know you, the press of ministry getting ready for tomorrow and all of that uh, has been a challenge. So let me, uh, let me sign us off with a word of prayer. And, uh, and my wife and I look forward to seeing you and your wife fairly soon, okay? Yes, yes, sir. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We appreciate so much this opportunity to speak with Tacky. We are thankful for the technology. Um, we are thankful that the technology has made it possible for us in some way to continue ministries, uh, even in the midst of this terrible uh, worldwide pandemic. Uh, we pray for Tacky's mother that you might do a wonderful, gracious, miraculous work in her life in these last days of her time here, and, and that you might bless uh, April with relief from um, her um, debilitating symptoms. We're thankful for Zoe. We pray that you might continue to bless Tacky's entire family and his ministry outreach around the world with the Greek-speaking people. Uh, bless our church uh, and the blessings that we receive from being associated with his ministry are so wonderful and we are grateful for it. So bless our, uh, our fellowship, uh, bless our time spent together this morning, uh, though not really together, and, and bless our ministries as we seek to uh, serve you and to exalt Christ. And for these things, we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, good evening, and God bless you, okay? Take care. God bless you. Thank you. Good to see you.